Today Winston and I are in downtown Louisville and we have a few different things that we want to find out about the Emacs Nanohawk X, brand new thing from Emacs. We want to see if it can carry an HD camera, we want to see how long it can actually fly, and we want to get in a little bit of trouble. Let's get to it. This is the Emacs Nano Hawk X. Let's open this up for the first time. Pop it open. We've got the drone, bi-blade propellers, battery charger, 450 mAh battery, adapters, more adapter, tool kit. That's about it. This is just a one cell, high volt, 3.8 volts, 160 C, 450 milliamp hour, one cell. Then you've got the multi-charger, just char plugs in on USB, and then you have adapters to this charger, two XT30, so that you can charge the batteries up just like that. So I do like that inclusion, that's pretty sweet. And then it always comes with tools, right? So you've got a little Phillips head screwdriver and extra screws and everything. So this is always a nice thing to have that Emacs always includes with uh, their kits. Next up, we've got the drone itself. Kind of got that standard Emacs nano hockey looking kinds of thing. It is an analog bird, not DJI digital, which kind of makes, it makes sense for the weight. 1202.5. 1100 kV motors from Emacs. You got your XT60 in the back. You've got Runcam Nano, which is my favorite micro camera. It looks so good compared to other micro cameras on the market, in my opinion. It's all mounted on there. It looks like there's some foam in there for some vibration isolation. You got a little whip antenna, and then there's the four in one that's deep underneath. You can see the FETs on the capacitor down here. That's all protected by a little plastic shield. The FR Sky protocol, so by default, there's an FR Sky transmitter in there. You can can see the red right there is actually an FR Sky antenna that's included by default. So you can bind it straight to FR Sky. So I'll use my Radio Master T16S to bind to the Emacs drone so that I don't have to put in a different receiver or anything like that. I can literally just bind this straight to that and that will be a great way to get started with that. Let's see about getting some props on here. It comes with these sweet little Avon by blades. Let's figure out which direction the props are going and then binder up. Okay, it looks like the props are spinning standard orientation, so props in. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah. All right. Don't do this at home. I'm pro I'm a professional. Hey. Okay. <gasps> oh, what is that? What is this? All right. She's ready. Let's go ahead and plug this in and fly for the first time. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, just from the first hover test feels like it's got plenty of power, especially for 1S, which is pretty crazy. So now let's actually do some flying around the yard. Okay, it's gonna go full throttle. <laughs> it's got some power, pretty flying. It kind of, like, it has a similar thrust to weight of, like, a cine lifter almost. Like, I know that's kind of a weird comparison to make for such a small thing, but, like... Genuinely, that's kind of what it feels like, is, like, the weight... power to weight of a cine lifter. But, like, it gets around. The tune feels great. You can really just huck it around these trees. When it sits down it's in its own prop wash, it does pretty good. Can't really go around the house because of the analog video, but like, I really feel like I'm getting pretty sendy, which is really nice for a drone of this size. And especially with this quiet, like the dogs aren't even barking at it, which is weird. Like normally they're like going crazy for it when it makes a big sound, but maybe because this one's quiet, they don't really care so much. Okay, this is the best flying micro drone I've ever flown, that's for sure. There's even a little bit of a breeze right now. Not a ton, but enough. Oh no! <laughs> and I put it in the top of a tree. Are you kidding me? All the way up there. <sighs> Got it. Got her back. Seems to be all right. Let's get her charged up and go for another one. Okay, so first impressions from first flight, really good overall. It's got a lot of power, surprisingly, for a 1S battery, especially a tiny little one like that. It's super, super quiet. I was blown away by how quiet it was. I knew it was gonna be, but just like, all you hear is just a little bit of a grunt kind of going, as it goes by, like that's really how it sounds to me. And 
it's it's peppy the tune is great like when i was sitting down in its own prop wash i didn't see a ton of like big like oscillations like you get with a tiny whoop for example and honestly like the power band on this reminded me a lot of a cine lifter i want to get winston to fly it check it out and then let's see what kind of trouble we can get into it because with this thing being so quiet and having so much power i think we could have a lot of fun with it probably can get it to carry the insta 360 go to get some hd footage on top of the fact that nobody's really going to care where or how this thing is flying as long as it's you know, obviously within the legal limits but yeah this thing is cool really excited to see what we can figure out what to do with it. so we've transitioned down here to louisville this is actually winston's place which is a freaking beautiful spot to be this particular neighborhood is like a, a an old part of louisville it's a tourist destination like there's actually like trolleys driving through all of the time to show off this area but it's also kind of a, a neighborhood where you wouldn't like rip a five inch drone but we've got the emax nanohawk x which is super stinking quiet between its 1s battery and these really wispy three inch props we think we might be able to get away with flying it around here a little bit so we're going to do some flights on well, obviously on analog, because it's an analog drone. But then also see if we can mount up the Insta360 Go 2 and get some HD shots flying around this beautiful neighborhood. You ready, Winston? Oh yeah. So before we go anywhere, I'm gonna have Winston fly this and kind of react to what it's like as it's intended. So the recommended battery is this 450 milliamp hour one cell, but I have a bunch of these 300s left over from the Nanohawk, and I've only got one of these, and we don't want to be waiting on just the one battery to charge all day, so we're gonna fly some of them on 300s, but do all of the important tests on the 450s. Winston is gonna be flying a 300 right now. So I already reacted to this at my house. Now I'm gonna have Winston react to it at his. It's so cool. It's got punchy, yeah. So yeah, this thing, first impression, it took off pretty easily. It's kinda, it definitely feels like a feather light. It's got plenty of go, but it's not too fast either. So I was just thinking that the power band overall, right around the half throttle point is perfect for cruising. You can get on it and, oh yeah, no, it moves. But it also has resolution downstairs where it's not too light, if that makes sense. It's not too overpowered, but it has enough power to where it's controllable, I think would be the easiest way to say it. Definitely analog video. So fun story, last time I flew something around the around my front yard, other than just a quick hover test, I was flying a five inch around the fountain. And granted to say, there's definitely a neighbor that wasn't very happy about it. But being able to fly this thing around and not worry about seeing that guy or him even hearing it is kind of nice. One of the things that Emax claims is that this gets about eight minutes of like cruising, cruising, and like three to four minutes of racing style flying. So I want to see if we can get into the range of like, you know, eight minutes of cruisiness on the 450. Nice. <laughs> you just crashed right there. Let's see if we can get like a good like three or four minute freestyle battery, which I think that's achievable. So I definitely uh, ran into some flowers over there. Walk of shame. Man. Flight review. Impressed so far. The, it weighs absolutely nothing. Has plenty of power. It's not underpowered. It's controllable down low. It's got resolution. I can't wait to see what it flies like with the uh, HD cam on it. Winston got to fly it without the camera, so let's see what this thing can do with the Insta360 GO 2 attached. We've got this little mount that Winston printed up for us. We'll put a link to the STL in the description so you guys can use it if you want. And literally all we did was kind of make a little bit of a belly in the mount and then one zip tie. And now the camera is locked on there. It's not going anywhere. I mean, that mount might break in a crash, but and then you get, you get a little bit of adjustability actually with it. So. We should now be ready to go for an HD flight. All right, let's see if it'll fly. All right, here goes nothing. I think I think it's got it. Oh yeah! Oh, she don't care, dude. That's a 1s drone, 1s three-inch drone that you can't hear five feet away and has full HD stabilized. Oops. My line of sight skills are not great. So in the past, the Nanohawk models had some occasional issues with vibrations and Emacs has addressed that and solved that uh, partially with this foam mount, but with other methods to make sure that the camera is not gonna vibrate inside of the thing. This drone is 41 grams with, of dry weight with a three inch propeller 1S drone. So it's only 41 grams, but it's still got three inch blades. So it's got a lot of power to it. The components inside of the Emax Nanohawk X are the same as the Nanohawk series, making all of the parts interchangeable and therefore cheaper and therefore easier to get a hold of. So they're kind of thinking through that ecosystem of making sure that everything is capable for you to be able to swap things in and out as quickly as possible. 
This drone uses the Runcam Nano 3 FPV camera. This is like the smallest possible camera, late, smallest, lightest camera possible, but it still has really, really good clarity. Like I love the image out of the Nano series compared to any other Nano camera out there. The VTX in the NanoHawk X is capable of 200 milliwatts, so you get a little bit of longer range flying. I'm not saying you're gonna go long ranging, but typically when you're using drones of this size, you don't typically get a 200 milliwatt VTX, so having that included by default is awesome. Okay, so I think we've done all the testing that we can do here, so we're gonna go ahead and reposition. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is test out those claims of endurance, right? Can we actually cruise for eight minutes? Can we freestyle for three, three and a half? So let's go find a spot where we can cruise around a little bit and put it to the test. So we've got the original 450 Ma battery, fully charged, actually HV charged, and we're gonna go for an endurance test. We're gonna see how long we can keep it in the air just cruising around this park, like a 50% cruise, because that's what they, cl they claim that it can do eight minutes. We're gonna find out if it can actually do that. There we go. Just crashed over the two minute mark. The battery's already done at 3.8, but I mean, with one cell, you typically run it pretty low for each cell, or for the cell, so I don't know, once we start seeing 3.3s, that's when I'm gonna actually be thinking that we're running low on battery, so still going great, just shooting around this park. We're at four minutes of cruising, 3.6 volts. It's dropping a lot slower now that we're in the lower voltage range, but still going strong. So, I gotta say, out here flying, he flew past me. I barely noticed that thing. This has gotta be one of the quietest drones I've ever heard. Like, exactly, you can't hear squat. Where is that thing? Hold on, there it is. Listen for it. Yeah. All right, I just got a land now notification. Batteries drop it off really quick, like I didn't have any time. 2.6, 2.5, full throttle. Uh, <laughs> so, oh shoot, and then the OSD reset. We'll have to, yeah, we'll have to go back and check the uh, actual DVR to see what the timer was, but it was like something like five and a half minutes that I got of just like 35, 40% throttle cruising. I don't know if that's quite eight minutes. I don't know, Emacs. But still, five minutes, five and a half minutes on a one cell, that's actually pretty ridiculous. So now that we've tested out endurance, we've tested out its ability to carry HD footage, I just want to freestyle. And this little bridge spot is phenomenal. We can go and dive through the struts up there, do matty stuff around the poles. I'm terrible at all of that, but it's going to be really fun with this. So let's get a little freestyle done. So one of the things that I like the most about this is just such a like nice little setup, like literally just goggles, controller, drone, full set of batteries. I'm not gonna break a prop because they weigh nothing. Like, we're ready to go. That's it, that's all we need. We can fly. a few of the Emacs
bag products as we've done reviews, this has gotta be one of my favorite ones so far. It's holding up pretty well. Even the props aren't bending on it, so I'm pretty surprised by how well it's taken my abuse. We've reached that point in the video where we might get in trouble. We're at 4th Street Live in downtown Louisville, and this is the first time I've ever seen it this dead. Like, there's nobody around here. This is the perfect opportunity to safely get some HD drone footage of this awesome space. kicked out of 4th Street Live, the uh, security guy came up to us really nicely and he was just like, hey, gotta have you have a permit to fly here. It's in indoors, like it's under a roof, so we're good with FAA stuff, but I guess they wanted a permit to be filming in 4th Street Live, so eh, what are you gonna do? We got the shot, we're out! So we finished up a full day of testing with the Emacs Nano Hawk X, and I gotta tell you, we're both blown away in a lot of different ways, right? This is probably the easily the quietest drone I have ever flown, first of all. So because of that fact, it's kind of like a perfect shenanigan machine. You can fly it in places that you wouldn't normally get to fly it. And it's like just unbelievable. We've also put this thing through its paces in terms of durability too. Like we actually filmed a whole segment of slow-mo footage just trying to crash it. And the worst thing that's happened so far is a prop came off and we couldn't find it. But losing props is part of the game with FPV. Not only is it great at freestyle and endurance with just analog, but you can stick an HD camera on there and get really, really good HD footage out of the Insta360 GO 2. And finally, while the endurance doesn't live up to what Emacs necessarily claims it can do of eight minutes, five and a half minutes of cruising is really, really good, as well as three and a half minutes of freestyle. That's up there for five inch drones but this is a 1S three inch micro guy that you can't hear and still flies. I'm not gonna say like a five inch cause that's pretty cliche, but it's pretty close. It flies really, really well for what it is. One thing I wanted to throw out is that Emacs did not pay us to make this video. They don't have any say over what video we're putting out and the final decision on what we get to say is up to us. So finally, I just wanted to remind everybody that, you know, this is a YouTube video. We're creators and we thrive on your guys' viewership. So if you could help us out by clicking the like button, commenting down below and sharing this video, if that's something that you're interested in. We have this drone linked in the description below as an affiliate link. If you choose to purchase it, you can also support the channel through that means. And as always, you can support the channel by going to store.nerk.tv and checking out some awesome Stay Flying merch. Thank you very much for watching and stay flying.